I don't see knowledge production and activism as separate. An important part about knowing the world is, is knowing how to change it. Um, I think that when we're working to change the world, likewise, that it's absolutely fundamental that everyone who's engaged in this collective project is understood and viewed as someone who has knowledge and can generate knowledge. Everyone needs to be viewed as an intellectual. Everyone needs to be viewed as a leader. I believe research is a human right that not just those in the ivory tower or academics engage in, but in fact, um, everyone should have the right to address and, uh, problems and issues in their community through research. As is probably not surprising, there's a big emphasis on individuals in academia and individual brilliance and stardom. But what would it mean to push against that, those notions to really create intellectual spaces and scholarly spaces that deeply honor the collective work that we do together aimed towards equity and social justice? My interest in coalitional work in part stems from my own background. Um, my mother is an immigrant from Germany. My father is Filipino-American. My grandfather um, is from a community that has very deep indigenous roots in the Mindanao region of the Philippines. So my own upbringing, you know, it was really two very different worlds coming together. That being said, my own educational experience was very assimilationist. Um, for example, um, I don't know any of the languages of, of my grandparents. So as an educator, it's been very important for me to really re recognize the plurality of knowledge and the plurality of, of um, insights that students bring, you know, into the curriculum. One of our most um, um, magical events happened recently when close to 30, 35 community members from the Aquinas Center, it was an intergenerational group, young people, children, adolescents, parents, grandparents, leaders, came to uh, the American Educational Research Association um, alongside doctoral students in New York City to present their research to a crowd of over 100. Um, the room was too small to house everyone, so we occupied the hallway. And the family's uh, research was um, completely on point, addressing issues of, of educational equity and access in Philadelphia. And so many people in the audience um, you know, were in dialogue with the families, were in dialogue with the young people. Um, and it was a, a, a brilliant example of, of the power of community-based research. One of the most rewarding aspects of being involved in a research project that has gone on, you know, we're approaching a decade, has, that has gone on for eight years plus, has really been um, to see how relationships have blossomed over time. The relationships between different community members at St. Thomas Aquinas from the various linguistic and cultural groups there, and also the relationships between the students at Penn, the doctoral students, and the community members as well. It turns out that people have become profoundly invested in each other's well-being and each other's lives. And a true sense of interdependence and interconnection and love has developed um, at times.